Um, my name is Xiao, so I'm going to present something that we are exploring. Can you put a microphone Yeah. yeah. Where's the microphone? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, my name is Xiao again. Yeah. So I'm presenting some of uh, my reason explore uh, regarding like VR plus education. Yes. So I've been working with education for quite some time, and right, right, recently, like 2016, I'm I'm working with uh, Jackie and Dong Biao who are coming from the gaming industry. So they want to make some difference. So they want to do some education related contents. So we 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 work together on Vito, uh, and then and the project attic is one of our earliest. Um, try on how VR can and education can combine together. Yeah, so how a VR education content is developed. So it's actually very very similar to like game or uh, actually also video and movies. So the core thing is really about storytelling as well. So it comes with scripting and directing and then you have conceptual design. Afterwards if you have already consolidated the designs, you go to the modeling, animation, and then after effects, and then adding on some audios and some music, and then polishing again, and then it will become a product afterwards. Yeah. So this is our initial concept, that we want to allow people to experience something that they cannot experience. Uh, we have some brainstorm, that, like uh, the star, uh, like the the space thing, but it's already so so crowded. So everyone is doing that. So we want to try something that's that's not so uh, n not having been done by someone else. And then we try something about Arctic. Yeah. So initially we got the our game designer who work on the concepts. That's the initial uh, design that we come up with. So we want to make something. Wow, it's cool. And <laughs> but uh, then you, actually this is a demo that we come up with. Um, it developed, yeah. So it's developed by Unity, and we are optimized for Oculus DK2, and then we also have some um, a more light version for Gear VR. Yeah. Some people might have already seen this. Um, for like 10 seconds. That's not good. Well, probably I show later when the screen's better. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. I just move on. All right. So what VR means for education? So it's really about like knowledge acquisition channels. So previously in the old time, teacher teach students. So it how it how it works, and then comes with books. 
and comes with PPT or Flash. Now it comes with iPads and these kind of tools to assist the teaching. But actually VR can be a more powerful tool for people to gain more attention to learn something that's not easy to understand. And then in the future actually AR will be a bigger thing because you can have some interactions with objects, with the things that you are actually teaching with. So it's it becomes more visual and more interactive. And why it makes sense? Because like actually 3D contents, it grabs a lot of attention to, to people. And students, like there are some researchers who do that, okay, the attention rate will become much more better and also like the, the scores will become better in some, in some subjects. And like, yes. I can't see your slides. Oh, sure. sure Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah, so another thing is about like self-exploratory learning. So there's an old saying called like Go Juju, which comes from like Confucius philosophy. Like explore the real, uh, explore the, like the, the exploring of reality leads to learning. And the exploring process self is a sole reason for true discovery of knowledge acquisition. The difficulty part is like the when you experience the VR world, it's non-linear, and as a director, you need to actually make storytelling natural uh, with consumers that go and explore it on their own. Yeah. So the another thing is like the interaction, because uh, right now actually, Gil, uh, HTC Vive is the best ever VR uh, device right now. So it has like controllers, it has uh, like motion trackers and also distance trackers that you can detect a lot, you can actually give a lot of inputs. But indeed like a lot of things you cannot, still cannot do, like you interact with objects. How can you make people like feel like you are actually living in the real environment? So these things are also some kind of challenging. And for like say gear VR, you also need to use some tech uh, panels to control the distance. And it's not real, it's not really very intuitive at this beginning. But people are actually doing the distance trackers right now, so it's it's going to be better. But probably like AI will be replacing that. But it's something that's facing the difficulties because for students, if they want to learn something, they want to be more interactive. And then if you without interaction it becomes like less real and becomes like, yeah, uh, the experience will get affected. Yeah. So another thing is really like, how can you balance the entertainment part and the learning part? Because without entertaining, nobody is going to watch these kind of things. And without education, you are losing uh, our own purpose. So that's also a very difficult part. Difficult part. Right now, the good thing for our team is Really, like we have um, two stage, like long term stage thinking and also like short term stage thinking. So, short in short term, we are actually partnering with some science centers to provide um, like uh, VR educational contents, and then we also uh, partner with some headset providers. But in the in the future, we hope that okay, in, and when everyone has like um, VR or this kind of devices at home, they can try to experience and learn something by themselves and they will tell the, their kids that okay this is something that's interesting and will be really worth uh, learning and they will that the, the kids will benefit as well so that's the, the, the long term goal all right I hope I hope this video is working no <laughs> all right um, Okay, because Jackie is currently in, in Beijing, so he, our, all our sets, device sets are actually not here. So I cannot show you the demo. I can only have the video, but it's on the uh, Meetup link. You can you can tr tr check that out, yes. Later you can post it out in the Meetup, and maybe okay. in the Facebook group also. Sure, 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 sure. Okay. All right, yeah. Any, let's take any some questions? questions? Yeah? Yes, let's take some questions. Questions for Xiao? Yes. Um, do you have any tips on um, um, staff or does someone come to you with the um, idea for what they need to present? Give 
some stuff. Uh, teachers, do you have teachers or educators that work with you or for you? Yes, we are actually partnering with uh, a school that they have dedicated teachers to work with us to come with the contents. But in the first stage, we are working with the teachers, uh, like with the school itself. But in the future, we hope that maybe more teachers can come and use our tool to create some educational contents. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, if you believe that AR is going to replace VR uh, yes. in terms of education, why yes. are you working with VR now and not just? Uh, because AI is. It's just, I mean, the technology is it just limited by the tech, basically. Yep, limited by yeah. the tech. So yeah. uh, you don't see them as like two separate kind of entities. You mean like VR uh, can provide yeah. one purpose and AI another, or do you think that mm. AI is just going to replace? I think probably no. these yeah. two are, yeah, complementary in some sense, like. Um, because the development tools we use, say, oh, use Unity, oh, oh, use these kind of things that you can develop something. But in terms of the interaction itself, I would say maybe AI will be very, very different from how we do in the VR thing, yes. So right now I don't have a, a HoloLens with me, so I, don't, I cannot tell like, how it works. Sure. But to, from my understanding, it might be something that will be really evolutionized. Some, uh, interactions, yeah, that's something that's not been added in, in VR yet. So I think that thing is quite essential in in, in, in terms of learning or self exploring this kind of thing. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Um, would you consider? A, right. Yes. This is my form. You want part? Yes. Yes. Would you consider um, virtual reality education experiences where you allow the users, uh -huh. the students, to choose the environments by which they learn from? So, for example, uh -huh. they could choose between well, several different kinds of environments. They could choose to learn in an Arctic style virtual reality environment, or they choose to learn in some kind of neoclassical lecture theater set in some kind of temple, if you so choose. Or oh, mask, for example. So, is it possible to is it possible for virtual reality to allow users to pick the setting, the environment that they wish to study? They wish to study it. Yeah, I would say it would be a very good idea to go for because it will really like brings people to that environment and make them like feel like okay, they are learning something that's related to this kind of environment. So, this is very useful. But. Um, well, another thought I come up with is really like collaborating, collaboration, no kind of teaching thing. So s say you are actually sitting here with your team, uh, with all the classmates here, right? And you, 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 you hear, uh, you actually wear a Gear VR, you, uh, you actually turn around and you see, oh, okay, this is a Zootopia, and then you can see, oh, okay, this is a mice, and this is something that, okay, uh, you can actually experience very different world like when you're actually learning and the teacher can set this environment to the to the students but what you're mentioning is really like self-learning because one learner can actually set his own environment and that can be also a very interesting thing like in in the end when people have their own device that would be a very good place to go because they are what this is what we are actually doing right now we are setting up one and one environment and let teach students come and learn. Yeah, so this is... Actually, yeah, the thanks. real answer to that is 3D modeler is expensive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. People that's developing will know that you, you don't yeah, have yeah, that yeah, love, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> True. Okay. Oh, yes. One more, one more. Um, oh, have you actually tried a few VR... Uh, have you tried a few... Yes. Right, uh, we are types of projects uh, in schools because yes. um, we do training. Yes. Now, one of the biggest issues we really have, right, or even when we show our clients and all, mm -hmm. is the headache we get after watching through the goggles. Yes. Uh, yeah, it, it's just a whole motion sickness thing. I mean, it's cool, it's nice, but everyone takes it off and then they all go like, you know. And now, in a normal environment like this, right, without the goggles, we don't get that, right? Now, but obviously, the moment you put on the VR, I'm not sure is it the thing about the parameters or something of that sort, but I've never seen anyone being able to totally resolve that, right? and especially if you're talking about training um, or teaching, um, it's going to be over an extended period of time, 
What is your thoughts on that? Well, uh, yeah, actually I also combine and compare some of the devices. Right now, like, actually HTC Vive is doing the best in terms of, like, adjusting your, uh, like, uh, like the, the way, like, you feel less dizzy, yeah. So the, the mobile device, uh, the Gear VR, and also this kind of device, which will be dominating uh, for education uh, purpose, they are still, like, evolving. I would say in terms of the quality of the pictures in the visuals, it's still not going to match, but like actually like for development wise, we can optimize for that. Yeah. So say like um, mm, instead of you make the movement very fast, you can actually make the movement like uh, in a consistent speed, which seems like oh okay you are moving, but it will become less dizzy to you. It, it, so so that's more related to like hardware. Yeah. So. This thing will be resolved like in the future, and it's, it's, it's actually being resolving right now, just that it's not good mm -hmm. enough yet. But I believe it's going to be resolved soon, yes. Yeah, Gear VR is coming up with a 4D something yeah, that will solve that problem, I guess. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Sure. Alright, we're going to wrap it up. Okay. Um, again, if you have any further questions, please grab Xiao after, yeah? Uh, we're going to give him a hand.